So for day one, we will uh, cover this uh, course uh, introductions, install Ansible and lab setups and Ansible components. So let me go through the content of day one. So now, uh, introduction, what is Ansible? I think you all a little bit know. Anyone, uh, Paul, Julius, you have an idea with Ansible? Yeah, I just I just went through a, a, a summary of Ansible today. So I've been here about Ansible. I just have just a, a little bit of heads up, uh, a summary of what Ansible is all about. Okay. So mainly, basically, it's in DevOps uh, DevOps area. It's Ansible use is 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 for configuration management, and it's yes, uh, obviously or an automation tools and the. For, for installation something, for uh, connectivity to clients and uh, other functionalities are they, uh, they can connect with, uh, there is no third party agent or no agent is needed to connect with Ansible. It's a, uh, simply, it's a completely free software, okay? So we can do anything, any configuration management using Ansible. So. It uses SSH connections and it can be easily connected uh, to any clients, uh, thousand, uh, hundred or five hundred of servers, uh, very easily. Okay, so and it uses SSH connection and basically Ansible uses push technology, whereas uh, Puppet is using full technology. So I will tell you what how uh, we'll be going to uh, push uh, use uh, push technology. So. So why we uh, we use Ansible? So one of the most uh, significant advantage of Ansible that it's free to use. As I said previously, that it is uh, completely free. So it's a basically it's a uh, it's coming from Red Hat. So it's uh, Red Hat is maintaining all the things in Ansible. So currently, I think Ansible is the latest version is 2.9. So whereas it started from 2.1. So now it's. Uh, uh, 2.9. So we can uh, use any version of Ansible. So basically, in GitHub, if you uh, if you want to download the Ansible packages, you can get uh, you can get via GitHub also. It is free as it is a free software. So whereas Puppet is not free, it's a license required for that. You have to pay for that. So it does not need any special system administrator skills to install the AAP in and use Ansible. It's simply it's very simple to install the Ansible and configure all the things. Okay. So it can support the many of the modules, okay, uh, many of the plugins. Using it, it can be integrated uh, with anything like in Jenkins, okay, Jenkins uh, Visual Studio, anything you can integrate it. Uh, you have to install the Ansible plugin on that, and you can get it. So it also it's not uh, uh, it's uh, Ansible is Ansible can be used in the Windows as well. Okay, basically Linux is uh, used for that, but we can use the Windows servers and set up the uh, environment uh, in Windows and in Windows. Okay. So it's a very lightweight and consistent, no constraints regarding the operating systems or underlying hardware are present. Whatever hardware is present, it's, don't, uh, it's not depend on that. It can be run in vSphere environment. It can be run in a, any physical server's environment. It can be run in, <coughs> it can be run in uh, AWS environment and Azure environment as, as well. So it's also very secure due to its agentless capability, capabilities. So um, no third-party agent installation need, uh, required in this case. Okay, in Puppet, one extra agent uh, uh, should be there. I mean, need to install. But in case of Ansible, so there is no need to install any agent. Okay, and it's uh, it can use it will use SSH. So use the open SSH secure features. 
so another advantage that uh, encourages the adoption of ansible smooth learning very simple and uh, smooth learning uh, curve determinant and it's a very good documentation are available in the google that is and the docs and civil.com you can go through it and you can you can find many of the things there okay so it's a basically history you can go through it i will uh, share the slides to you and you can study i'm not going through the history of and so because i'm not going to make it boring <laughs> okay so so the ansible architecture will come to it so how ansible work okay so here are the several users are there you can see the users and if you write a playbook in ansible so first of all playbook will go to the inventory whatever host you are mentioning it will go to the invent uh, it will uh, searching for the host that should be present in the inventory if Uh, the host is not finding in the inventory then it will not run simply okay so what is inventory uh, inventory is nothing but the a, a file a text file uh, inside that you have to mention all the servers uh, in, uh, all the servers singly or otherwise you can make it a group okay whatever you have to mention in that and then ansible will read this inventory file and then will go away if it is not if the if the server is not finding inside the inventory file then it will not run okay so um let, let me yeah yeah uh, let, so so basically in inventory i uh, the, these are the specifications that you put that is is like a like your order or your command what you want ansible to do in the playbook right Sorry, sorry. Can you please repeat? I said so. In effect, inventory means these are your specifications that you put. Uh, what about a thing you want uh, the Ansible playbook to do, the, the, the Ansible to, to to do? You you put in the inventory so so the, uh, the Ansible can pick it up and 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 function right. Yeah, it's a not function uh, of inventory because uh, if you are defining any Ansible playbook under the host section, you have to define the host or host group. Okay. you can okay, write okay. it simply a single server or you can make a group suppose i will show you inside the play uh, suppose inside the playbook you have mentioned server 1 okay so server 1 is a host name of a server suppose linux server okay so server 1 should be defined in the inventory file so if it is not it's in the inventory file the ansible can do, will not be run because ansible playbook will search whatever the host you are defining that should be present in the inventory file okay it may be the single server or you can make a group if ansible play uh, under the ansible playbook suppose group 1 is there and you have to mention the group 1 inside the playbook and group 1 can be defined in the inventory file under that group 1 you can define um, hundred of servers okay that's it am i clear yes yeah what uh, what you clear Okay, so I will show you whenever I will set up the lab, and then we'll show you. So after that, it will uh, go to the. Uh, it will. Uh, I mean, uh, after reading the inventory file, it will continue with the playbook, and it will apply it to the host. Uh, there is a, uh, actually there should be two uh, in this scenario. One one uh, one server is defined as a control node where Ansible is installed, and from that control node, we will push all the things to the client servers. Here is the client server host section. Okay, is the client servers, and that should be uh, in the technical term it is called as a managed node. Okay, so one is the control node, one is the managed node. So we will apply all the things from the control node to managed host. there should be there may be 100 of managed nodes are there okay we can simply apply to them uh, using the control node and in the control node ansible software should be installed and no no need to install anything inside the managed node it's a simply it's very simple so okay it's a total architecture okay so so if you want to integrate anything plugin then it can be integrated with the cmdb and also private public cloud all the things you can integrate 
the very simple architectures. So now the will come to the install Ansible and lab, lab setup. So let me open the AWS account. You all have account in AWS and in FreeTier account? Yeah. So you can try it. No problem. No, but I think for, for me, it would be better if if I follow you up and then later on I do it. Because what I want to do is I'm, I'm, I'm going to get confused. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Can you please tell me? I think for me it's, it's better to 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 follow you to see how you do it than I do it later because if I want to follow you step by step, I'm gonna get confused instead of understanding what you're doing. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, you're you're right. Even me, I, I will just watch and and do, do do repeat the laps after the class. Yeah, if you can send the if you can send the commands like in a in a text file, right? where somebody can copy and follow the step later on, that will be good. Yeah, also you can get the recording of that, I think. Okay. No, even if you get the recording, I mean, you cannot copy and write. Paste. Well, like copy, paste, copy, paste. I don't think it will give you the access to copy, but if you can send like just the command, the installation and everything, just the command. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will give you, I will give you, no problem. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, that's oh, perfect. You all know Linux administration part? I mean, I'm asking. I am a little bit. <laughs> a little okay. bit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, as it is uh, uh, on the Linux part, I mean, uh, as we are installing all the things and configuring all the things uh, in the Linux environment, so it will be good to have a little bit knowledge in Linux administrator. Okay. So, no problem, we can manage. Here is the console of AWS. So I will mm -hmm. simply going to launch two instances. Okay, mm -hmm. two instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Computer is a little bit slow. So we will click on launch instances and we'll install the Linux image. Have you launched EC2 instances in AWS? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Which way is your launch? I mean, you have launched. Um, um we've, I've, I've done the Ubuntu and even, even Red Hat. Okay. The same and, way. Okay. That's fine.
<clears throat> did, did you change the number of instances? Because I just saw one. Or you want to create them separately? I was thinking of one should be in uh, Red Hat and one uh, Sendu. Oh, okay. okay. Ubuntu. Oh, Sendu. Okay. Hey, if you can, you can do all the things. You, you will. You can okay. have save, save the timing. Okay, I will change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. make a new security that's a strong website and look in there I have that key pair so I'm not creating any key pair Post it. Uh, I don't have the ticket. One minute, I have to check. I have to launch it again because I don't. I have the key pair in the other machine. So. Okay, that permission I will delete. Okay. In the meantime, I will convert the PPM to PPK as it is required to connecting 
on the outside. Let it be run and so first of all, uh, in case of uh, you can install Ansible inside the Red Hat as well as in Paint to it. Okay, so in Ubuntu, you can also install. So in case of Red Hat, if you are installing the, uh, if you are you want to install the Ansible, you cannot get it from locally because Ansible packages will not uh, will not be there in the local repo. Okay. So in case whether uh, whereas in inside the CentOS you can get it from there. So because CentOS is a basically used for uh, everything. I mean CentOS is a free. Okay. But Red Hat is also free, but subscription required for that. Okay. You you need to have a sub either from the satellite uh, otherwise from the other Linux server that will be uh, that is configured as a repository okay. so for Red Hat you, uh, Red Hat it is giving the support of, it is not giving the support for free in case of centers everything is free okay. so okay. that's why people always prefer uh, to install the centers but uh, uh -huh. other organizations that uh, they are using, they are using uh, Red Hat Linux because they, they they are having the subscription with satellite and they can get all the updated packages day by day. Okay, every month uh, Red Hat is updating the packages inside the satellite and they are getting the packages, uh, updated packages. So what what we will do inside the Red Hat Red Hat uh, uh, system? We will install the EPL repository, or we will configure the EPL repository. EPL is a simply completely free that is available in the network uh, internet. So you can uh, configure the EPL repository, and then you can get the Ansible package from that. Okay. So we are not uh, taking it from the local because locally it is not available. So you have to configure the EPL repository, and then you can find the Ansible package. And by configuring the EPL repository because Ansible uh, software is in the EPL repository and in case of center simply it is there you can uh, install the Ansible locally because uh, the software is also there so now uh, I think we are good to go to connecting the machine so I will change the tag and then control. Control means where Ansible should be installed. Okay, means uh, the built in that, that, that's a management node. Yeah. Okay. Is, management node means in the sense the, all the things should be pushed from here. I mean inside yes. the control. Okay. And Ansible mm -hmm. software should be installed inside the control node. And manage mm -hmm. means that is a client. I mean, yeah. Whatever we will push into that, that will go into that. <clears throat> so it's it's like um it's like master slave. It's not a master slave because master slave is uh, for using uh, using for balancing, right? Load balancing. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. So it's not a master slave. It will. Uh, yeah. We are going to apply those things to the client. If, if yeah. uh, 100 of servers are there, so 100 of servers will be play a role like manage host. 
I mean, what are the changes? What is the requirement? Suppose uh, uh, HTTP software should be installed in 100 servers. So we will push the HTTP installation from the control node to 100 of servers. That is called as managed hosts. Oh, so thus, thus it is a push configuration. Yeah, yeah. So we will connecting the machine from the my from the IP. Okay. There is the PPK file. We mm -hmm. just paste it. Login should be using ECT user. In case of tempers, tempers user is there. For edit liner, we will connect him via ECT user. So here is our server. I will change some settings that connection should not be timed out after 15 minutes. So I will make it 200. And also, I want to increase the font. So I will make it 16 as it will be clearly visible to you all. Okay. Are you able to be clear? Yep. Mm -hmm. So here, if we go, so uh, have you installed any packages inside the Linux system? Um, no, not yet. So yum, we will install the pa any packages in Linux system to, uh, that is using yum. So yeah. yum install stable. Okay. So it will search for all the repository that is present inside the server, and then it will if any if Ansible is there, it will going to install. Okay. So now it is searching for the repository, validating the repository that has present in the server. So here it is mentioned no package Ansible available. That means we have to configure it. We have to configure the, as I told previously, uh, it needs subscription. So, so we will configure the ETL repository and then you can install Ansible. So now, uh, in the in internet, you can get. Just simply type. So using wget we will download it. Okay. So at first you have to download the ETL latest package and then mm -hmm. we will configure it. Install the ETL release. Yeah. Uh, so this one is using Fedora. No, uh, the yeah repository is uh, from coming from Fedora because it is completely free. So okay.
oh we need to install the w gate because uh, if you are not installing the w gate so it will not uh, work anymore okay so using yum we can install any packages so yum then install and then the package name okay in line up you will get uh, if you are having any requirement to install anything just simply yum and then install operations and then the package name it will install w gate because that it will install because it is available in the repository okay here you can show the detail w gate is installing architecture is uh, uh, 64 and version is that and it is available in that repository which is available locally inside the server okay mm -hmm. so now it will ask for dependency so it will simply install now it, the command will work okay and now it's downloaded that packages okay so now you are you have to install install so now yum clean all yum clean all will uh, what yum clean all will do it will simply clearing the cache of yum yum is a basically package manager whatever uh, package we are installing or anything uninstalling uh, comparing uh, reinstalling whatever we will do in linux we, we have to use the yum yum now as i install the uh, repository i mean epl repository it will come here if you give yum repo list it will show that epl repository is there okay and these all are the uh, local repository Okay, so now we will install Ansible. So because uh, before that, uh, if you are giving yum info command, it will show Ansible package details. See here, where from where Ansible package is coming? Yeah. EPL. Okay. Now I will going to install. <clears throat> so in fact, uh, before you, you can install Ansible, you have to build the foundation on which it's going to sit. Sorry? I think in effect, before you install Ansible, you have to all this, what we've just done is just build a foundation on, on which the Ansible is going to sit so it can work properly. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you are using CentOS, then you can uh, simply install yum install Ansible. It will give the package. Okay. It will oh, okay. So in case of Red Hat, you need to download the EPL and then you have to configure. Right. So it will be... So uh, it depends on platform. Yeah, yeah, depends. Not it depends on the platform. The Ansible depends on the Ansible package is available or not. In case of Red Hat, locally Ansible package is not available. So that I did or the follow did the uh, above step. What okay. I show show you. But in case of CentOS, you can try in your one. If you are you have you can launch CentOS and then you give if you give yum install Ansible, then it will. So you uh, will install the Ansible. Package. 
Should I oh, ping, yes. yeah. ping it? Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> yes, this, this is this is really really. I mean, I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just it pulls down all the steps. Yeah. Yeah, if it recommend it will show all the steps. Okay. okay, can I test it in the chat? So, Ama. Yeah. What you're saying is that when you're using Red Hat, right? Yeah, yeah. Red Hat. You have to use EPA, right? So it means when you're using Red Hat, I know you cannot run Ansible without um, Python, right? Because with CentOS, yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to you have to install something like Boot3, right? No. In the in case uh, the Python and the Jinja2 are the dependencies of Ansible, so you need to have the Python package uh, is mm -hmm. uh, version uh, should be greater uh, than 1.6. Okay, 1.6. Yeah. So yeah, because I saw on the commands that you write, there was no place that you you install Python, but I saw Python running on the scripts. Yeah, uh, Python is a dependency package. Okay. Here, you, if you go, I will show you. Yeah. Yeah. Python, uh, Python package uh, should be dependency. Python uh, 1.6 oh, okay. is there. So 1.6 and above. So for, to work the Ansible fine, uh, it is a minimal requirement. That is, Python package should be 1.6 or greater than that. Okay, and the Jinja 2 template. These tools are dependent and these tools are locally available. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, because I remember when I used to run CentOS, I have to install Boto 3 before I can even use Ansible. Okay. Uh, now, if in case of CentOS, if you are installing the Ansible, it will automatically find the dependency package. Ah, okay. Have, you, right. have, you, have you, uh, installed it separately? What's that? Have you installed the Python and the Jinja 2 templates uh, separately? No, I think when I was installing the, when I was using CentOS, CentOS, right? So when I was running the the uh, the Ansible commands, right? So yeah. uh, there was a place that I needed to run a uh, both, I think both three, yeah, to okay. get the dot, I think py file. But here you didn't you didn't have to install it. It just as soon as you say it's a dependent, it, it's a dependency, no. right? It's a dependency yeah. process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have entered Y here. So oh, okay. they are they are asking for the confirmation that are the dependency and uh, will you proceed with the uh, de installation of dependency packages? So I here said yes, and then it is continued. Continued. So have you got my ping on? I mean, yeah, I have ping that. Right do you have any? Do you have any uh, this thing? Because when you are installing the the this thing, right? There, there's a lot of um, changes that you make when you are doing the the putty. Do you have any documentation for that? Sorry, what exactly you are looking for? For the putty configuration, because I realize that you're not using get bash, right? Most of us connecting on this line, we're using mostly get bash. Okay, so you can install the putty. Putty is also free software. If you are, mm -hmm. you can install the putty in your uh, desktop. Okay, and also you are have you have to you need to have the putty gen as uh, you can convert the PP, PEM file to PPK to connect in by AWS, okay? So in the AWS PPR, you, you will get the PEM format, okay? So PEM yeah, we can talk about that if you have some time. Okay, okay, okay. okay I will discuss it in the um, no problem. So you, if you try with your own, I mean, own account, all the things, and then uh, come to me, what are the challenges you are facing, then we will take a look into that, okay? So now um, another node is there. I have configured. Yeah. 
which is the manage nodes so i will open that also because i have to set up the lab Okay. Yeah. If you are having any queries, uh, think, um, I mean, tell me, okay, I will clear them. So now I'm not going to install Ansible here because it, as it is a managed mode, okay? Yeah. So first requirement is we need to create an user, okay? That can be uh, interact with the, uh, with both of the servers, okay, between uh, the servers. Okay, so I will simply use user add comment. Suppose I will set cloud user. So configure cloud user. And now we will set the password for that. Cloud user. I will change the host name also. Host name. Is the control node? Control. Fine. The hostname has been changed for that server. it is a manage node and it is a control node so here ansible version is 2.9 as i told that is the latest version And Python version is 2.7. So I told that 2.6 or higher than that it should be. Now inside the manage node, I need to have a that same user user as. Now uh, I need to use some setup mm -hmm. so that cloud user can go from control node to manage node without password. Okay, so all the things operations that we will do from here it will be executed there. 
okay while we, whenever we are running any comment or any playbook okay for, for any operation so con from control node cloud user can go to the manage node this node without the password so i have to configure that key okay. so i will show you this is the command is ssh key then i can see the algorithm before that i need to switch to cloud user here now ssh then i can see rsa so it will uh, asking for the uh, any passphrase okay i will not give any passphrase as i want it to be as a password list mm -hmm. so i give simply enter and then again enter so now dot ssh folder has been created here so i will go into that the two keys has generated okay id rsa dot pub and id rsa that is the private key and that is the public key. So I need to copy the public key from this server to the destination server so that it will communicate passwordlessly. Here I have to switch to cloud user and then here no SSH JP is there. So I have to create the SSH JP. Dot SSH. Permission should be seven zero zero. Dot it is. Now I will go into the dot it, and I have to create one file for Linux. If you are you are you are creating any file, you have to give the touch command. Touch. Permission should be six zero zero. Here we are using GI editor. Have you guys used GI editor, right? GI editor, have you used? Yeah. Okay. So it's a simply best editor is there. So you can do any operations inside there. So GI editor. I will simply push that key inside uh, into the manage node. I will copy from here to here inside the authorized key. Here is the uh, VI editor screen. So I will go to the insert mode and then will paste that. And then simply. So now I copied the public key from the control node to manage node. Yes. Okay. So now it should be able to SSH cloud password. So so now I I will SSH. Yes, this is to control me. What is this for? Permission denied. One minute. Yes, so the spelling was uh, incorrect. That should be authorized key. Okay, previously it was authorized key. That should be authorized key. It yes, should be there. So now it can communicate. So that is the uh, in the IP of uh, managed host. So now if I do SSH from here, 
it will not asking for the password as i copy the public key there okay can be communicate now we can go to the managers see here okay so now if uh, we can able to run anything from that i mean using n7 okay have you clear guys clear with that because it's a more important thing to set up the environment maybe in your organization the environment is also, also there so password lessly also there sandria uh, are you clear Yeah. It's, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what you're doing is that you're using your control, your let's call it like your master machine or your managed node, right? Yeah. To be able to connect to the manager. To connect, right? That's why you're creating both public key and private key. The private key remains with the managed node, while the public key is uploaded to the control node, right? No, no. From the control node, and the control node, I have generated the public key and private key. And from yeah, the you call, node, yeah, that you 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 from the control node, you are the public key is being co is copied to the managed node, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always node. like to call it like it makes it more ex more explicit and like you have a master machine and then or a, mm. a master node and a client, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, from the master node, I mean uh, the control node, we are mm -hmm. copying the public key to there as it will communicate a higher password lately. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can do that. Uh, you can, uh, you cannot. If you are, you don't want to have the password less. So then, mm -hmm. but there is a there is there is a file they call um, config file right, where you can go there and then no, is it config? Yeah, config file where you can go there and you make it part. Uh, Passwordless, right? Well, in the answer. Yeah, well, you can go there and make it passwordless. So in such a way that it won't ask you for the. I think there's some. I think you feel like um, password. Like you're going to set password from yes to no, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, it is. Um, oh, are you asking about SSH config file? SSH config file. Yeah, I think SSH config file. Yeah. So no, so SSH config file inside. If you defining the password list, uh, uh, is yes. no, it's just like the password is there, but you are you are moving it from yes to no. If you are moving password list, uh, password of uh, password list, uh, yes to no, then that will not communicate to. I mean, no, in this, in this situation, right? You when you use the SSH key chain, right? You create both the public and the private key, right? Yeah. So when you get the public key and then you save it in the in the in the managed node. I mean, the let's say one is managed node. I usually call it a client machine. Okay, you save it in the client machine, right? So you can go now on the SSH uh, this thing and enable and say okay, don't ask me password because you know that you already uploaded the the private the public key. Yeah. So there's already there's already that established communication, right? Yeah. yeah. One time established communication between the the master on the managed node and the client. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So if you don't want to password layer, then you can have uh with password uh, if you are not establishing any password lately i mean cloud user is there and also cloud user is there then mm -hmm. to run the ansible playbook or ansible command it will ask for password and then the manual intervention should be there so automation will not be there so that that is the main goal to set up the passwordless communication so that if you are running suppose ansible is integrated with kenkin okay So Kenkin pipelines is uh, running, so it's it, it's not possible to uh, run the Kenkin uh, to enter the password at the same time while running the Kenkin path Kenkin pipeline. Okay, it's very complicated. I mean, it cannot be done. I think because whenever you are running the Kenkin pipeline, it will ask for the password, Ansible password to run the playbook 
and 100 if you are running to 100 servers then 100 times password they will ask then that will be the manual intervention that will not going to uh, automation so we are using the password layer technology and if you are come to the security so that you that you uh, if you are uh, if you say that uh, it cannot be there because the security issue should be there so, but it will be it can be overcome okay inside the access.connect only we will allow the system admin to run the cloud user passwordlessly so it can be restricted inside the access document so that other any users cannot have the passwordless SSA except the cloud user. Okay, we can make that ex exception inside the access document so that it will not be a security issue. And as we are the system admin, we can use that, and system admin can use that. Okay, so. Okay, so we will go to the slide. So here it will simply show the install the APL repositories and sudo the yum install it will release how to install the stable language. So we come to set up the environment, launch two EC2 instance in AWS install and sudo in one machine and so that this system will act as a control node and other one is as a manager that we did already configure the passwordless space in both machines so that control node can connect with the manage node okay it's also done so now it's a uh, inside the ansible uh, I will I have not added the events. One that thing to set up.
Do you want to set up passwordless SSH? So I will give you the command. So the 700 is um, read, write, and execute? Yeah. No, okay. uh, read, write, execute permission all for root. And for uh, here, 7 is for root, and 0 is for group owner, and 0 is for other. OK. For only root user having the read, write, and execute access. That means. OK. There are only read access, uh, read write access, not execute access.
so i'll paste it into the chat okay so what is now now we can go to the manage host here from here okay again this and got this message we have few times left uh, okay no problem i will Okay. I will go to the summary. Okay. Before that, I will show you. Uh, I will tell you one thing. Let me. So whenever you are installing the Ansible, it will create a folder under etc. That is uh, etc. dot Ansible. Etc. Ansible. Okay. So inside the etc. Ansible, everything is happening. Happy. Everything will happen. Okay. So here, what this folder contain? That is Ansible dot csv. That is the configuration file of Ansible. I will come all the things in what is containing Ansible dot csv in the latter part. And also host section is there. Okay. And also roles section is there. So first of all, I told about, uh, I said about uh, inventory file. So inventory mm -hmm. file location is. Post here. That is the inventory file. Here. Okay. So, so what? What does it mean? Uh, Ansible dot csv is the configuration file. Host is the inventory file, and roles is uh, all that. The, all these things we will cover. Okay. I'm just uh, telling that thing that after installing the Ansible, that three things you will get by default. Okay. Mm -hmm.